Hey everyone, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today I'm gonna to show you how to remove the safety grid from your Pit Boss Hopper. Now there's a couple important things you need to do after you remove the safety grid to help protect your Pit Boss, so make sure to stay tuned until the end. So why would you wanna remove the safety grid in the first place? Well, you've probably noticed that the grid does make it more difficult to move pellets down the ramp towards the auger, as well as out the exit door when you're trying to empty the hopper. If you watch our channel, you know that we're big proponents of not leaving your pellets inside the hopper for an extended period of time. We even made a video showing how you get better smoke from dry pellets versus ones that have been sitting outside in the humidity. Whenever we're not gonna be cooking for a few days, we empty our hopper and keep our pellets in a good airtight container like this one from Oklahoma Joe's. We made a video specifically about how to empty the hopper and auger on your pit boss. And you'll notice in that video, I had to use a paint stick to get all the pellets out the exit door. And lastly, when we want to mix up different types of pellets to get our own custom blend, it's hard to do with the grid in place when you have to use a paint stick versus just being able to use your hand to move the pellets around. So why is there a grid in the hopper in the first place? Well, it's a safety feature put here by Pit Boss to keep you from getting your hands anywhere near the auger when you're trying to move pellets around inside the hopper. If the Pit Boss is plugged in, that auger can start moving at any time, and if your fingers are anywhere near it, it could cause a serious injury. So you need to be fully aware of this risk before making the decision to remove the safety grid. To be extra safe, only brush pellets towards the auger, and you can still use your paint stick if you need to move pellets around near the auger itself. Pit Boss obviously doesn't recommend you remove the safety grid. I actually don't recommend you do it either, especially if you have small children, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it today if you want to. If you choose to move forward, you do so at your own risk and acknowledge that I and Mad Backyard have no responsibility for any lost limbs, digits, or appendages. Now that that's out of the way, let's do this. So here we've got our Pit Boss Pro Series 1150, but it's gonna be pretty similar on most other Pit Boss models. We've got six screws holding the grid in place. There's two on the back here, two on the sides, and then two in the front. These screws you see coming in from the inside going out on the inside part of the hopper are holding the lid on. We're not gonna remove those, so just leave those alone. We're all gonna, only gonna take off uh, two on each of these outside edges. So all you need to remove the first screw is a Phillips head screwdriver. I would avoid using an electric screwdriver or a drill, or you may end up scratching the outside of your Pit Boss hopper. All you need is a screwdriver. You're gonna slowly unscrew it. Make sure to hang on to the screw and the washer, because we're gonna need them later. And then we're gonna repeat that with the other five screws. Now that all six screws are removed, the uh, grid's only being held inside the hopper by its own tension. I found the easiest way to get it out is to just grab on the side here where this little triangle part comes up where the uh, probes normally sit and just pull this back and straight up. And then you can pull the rest of the grid out of the hopper. So we've got our grid out, but we're not quite done yet. See, the problem is if you just leave it like this, you still have these holes exposing your hopper uh, to the elements. So if it does start raining in the middle of a cook or something, even if you close the lid, you could still get water inside your hopper from these holes here. So we need to cover up these holes somehow. Some people online have recommended covering them with duct tape or using silicone caulk. I think a more effective solution is just to put the screws that we took out before back through these holes. Unfortunately, the grid is what had the threads to hold our screws in place. So if we try putting our screw back through the hole, it's just gonna move around and not stay put. So we need some sort of nut to put on the back to hold it in place. I chose these wing nuts to help hold the screws in place. You're gonna need a uh, eight diameter, 32 threads per inch size wing nut or regular nut uh, to hold your screw in place. I'll put an Amazon link to these uh, wing nuts that are the right size down in the video description below to save yourself an hour or two going to the hardware store. So we're gonna take our original screw and washer and put them back through the outside just like they were before. Now I've also got a number eight washer that I picked up. I'll put an Amazon link to this down below too. And I'm gonna put this on first. Then I'm gonna take my wing nut and go ahead and thread it on the screw and just hand tighten that. And our hole is filled. It's gonna keep any water from getting in if it rains while we've got the cover off. And we're just gonna repeat that with the other five screws. So there you have it. We removed the grid, but then we also put the screws back in to help keep any water from getting in the hopper and ruining our pellets. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. And make sure to also check out madbackyard.com for more Pit Boss recipes, resources, and how-to guides. Thanks for watching.